testing. So this uh, video, we're going to be talking about the direct comparison test. This test uh, goes uh, along with the other four tests we've learned this chapter. So in case you've forgotten which ones we've learned, let me highlight them for you. Maybe you want to circle them. Um, but we've learned the nth term test. We've learned the geometric test, if we have a geometric series. Uh, we learned the integral test. And just recently, we learned the p-series test. And basically, if, if they fall into these four categories, we could do the test, and it's really easy. But the problem is, is that if it's not, if it doesn't look like the nth term, it doesn't look like geometric integral p-series, then we have no idea what um, we have no idea what we're supposed to do or how to figure out if it's converging or diverging. So let me give you some examples. Okay, number one, we know that this one right here is a geometric series, um, and we can figure out if it's converging or diverging, or whatever. But this one, we can't tell. It's not geometric because it has that n up at top. So how do you figure out if it's um, converging or diverging? Same thing with the bottom one here. We st we studied this last time. Uh, a p series. It has an exponent here. And we know how to find a p-series if this is greater than 1. But this is not a p-series. So how do you figure out if this is converging and diverging? And lastly, number 3, um, this one, we could do the integral test because it's positive, it's decreasing, and it's continuous. And we could take the antiderivative of it. But this one, because it has that n squared up at the top, I can't take the antiderivative. So I can't take the integral test. So the question is, how do you do series where you don't have a p-series, geometric, or integral test. What do you do? So what I'm going to do is a new test. It's called a direct comparison test. Okay. So look at your notes. Here it says direct comparison. And the, the thing that you really need to know is that a and b represent uh, two functions or series. And b is always bigger than a. So let a be bigger than 0 and b is bigger than a. Okay. So write this for me on your notes. If you're given a, if you're given some sort of series a, and b is, you're going to create one that is bigger, and we're going to call that b. So you're given an a, we're going to create a b. And if that is true, then with the given, or sorry, with the created one that we made, if the one that is bigger, b, is bigger, and it converges, then the smaller one has to converge. So think of it like if in a graph when something converges, like at infinity converges towards some number, then um, something smaller has to also converge. Okay. Now in reverse, if you're given a bigger function, say b, you could create a function or series that is smaller. And if that if that smaller, let me create one right here. Uh, if that smaller function diverges, then the bigger one has to diverge as well. So long story short, um, basically we're going to compare different series, and if a smaller one, um, if a smaller one diverges, then the bigger one has to diverge. Um, or if a, uh, a bigger series converges, then the smaller one has to converge as well. And those are the only two that we can do. We can't do any other ones. We can't do reverses. We can't do anything else. But these are the only two rules that we can do. So Monterey Notes has a proof. We don't have to do the proof. You can just turn to the next page of your notes. And let's do an example of is this converging or diverging. So look at this problem. It's, it it kind of looks like um, a geometric series. Um, it kind of looks like it's, it's something that I already know. But it's not. It has that 2 plus over there. So what I'm going to do, I was going to say that this looks kind of like 3 to the n. So if you remember from yesterday, this is a, uh, a p series. This is a p series series. Okay. Now, when I look at these two, and you might have to do some an example. Like, for example, if I plug in 1, if I plug in 1 here, this becomes 1 over 5. And I plug in 1 here, this is 1 over 3. Um, if I plug in 2, this one becomes 1 over 11, and this one becomes 1 over 9. So you may notice, and you keep on doing this, but this particular one is bigger, is always going to be bigger than this one. Okay. So basically, I'm going to write this, 0 is less than uh, 
1 over 2 plus 3 to the n, which is less than 1 over 3 to the n, right? So I figured this out. That means I know that this is a to the n, and this is b to the n, okay? So remember my rule. If they give us a to the n, okay, I create a b to the n, okay? And now, if you look back at our notes, I was given a to the n, and I've created a b to the n, okay? So they've given me a series that was smaller, and I created one that was slightly bigger, okay? And then it says, if it converges, then the other one has to converge. So if I look at this one, I look at this one over three to the n, it's a p-series, okay? It's a p-series, it's a p-series. This isn't a p-series, <laughs> not that I look at it. Um, don't hate me. This is a geometric series, okay? Geometric series says, if you remember, that if uh, I get, there's an r, and if that r is less than one, then it converges, okay? So for this particular one, r, let me use a different color, r is one third, where basically every time we um, see the next series, it, it's always multiplied by one third. So if you forgot, this is one third time, um, plus one ninth plus one twenty seven. This series is always multiplied by one third, so r equals one third. And if you remember, if r is between zero and one, this converges. So I found out that one to the three n converges. And since it's bigger than the other one, that means a to the n also has to converge. So for your AP test and things like that, you're gonna say because b to the n converges, a to the n converges. So I know it was confusing to you because I, I said p series, but it's actually a geometric series, but you know that's because it's bigger, you can do that, okay? Now, second example, same thing, it looks like I don't know how to do this one, okay? But you may notice that this looks kind of similar to one over radical n, or one to over n to the half. And now this one, sorry I messed up last time, this is a p-series, this is the one that we did last time, okay? So first of all, you need to figure out which is bigger, which is smaller. So again, I'll test the number, like I test one, this one will be one, this one will be one-third, yeah? Uh, I could test uh, 4 because I want to do a regular square root. If I test 4, uh, this one becomes 1 half, and this one becomes 1 fourth. So you'll notice that 1 over right, uh, square root of n becomes, uh, 1 over square root of n is bigger than uh, 2 plus square root of n. So, like I did last time, 0, let me do a different color, 0 is less than 1 over 2 plus radical n, which is less than... 1 over radical n. Okay. So now what we found is, we found out that this is bigger, so this has to be a to the n, and this has to be b to the n. And again, this is similar to the last one. If this converges, then the other one has to converge. Okay. But we notice in this n to the half, in this p series, if you look here at the n to the half, this p series, I find out that because r is a half, this b to the n, oops, this b to the n um, diverges. Um, because um, in the p series, um, this, this power, the one we did yesterday, this power is less than one. So I know that this diverges. But the problem is that if this diverges, I can't prove that this diverges, okay? Remember in the rules, if I go back, the rules only state I could do that only if it's the other way around. So in the last problem, if you remember, we did this. This one converged, so this has to converge. But I can't say because this diverges, this diverges. So some of you may be saying, okay, we're stuck. Okay, We're kind of stuck. So what that means to you is I can't use this direct comparison test because it, it doesn't. this one diverges. I can't prove that this one diverges. So what I'm going to do is I have to choose another function, okay? So what I'm going to do, let's choose, um, what if I chose 1 over n, which is also a p-series. It's also the harmonic series. So again, let me test some numbers. If I test 1, I get 1. If I test 2, if I test 2, I get, 
I get 1 over 2. So you may notice like, oh, it's, it's, it's almost the same thing again, okay? But you may notice this, okay? If I plug in 4, I get 1 fourth. So at 4, this one and this one are the same. If I plug in, um, let's plug in 9, okay? If I plug in 9, this one becomes 1 9th. Okay. If I plug in 9, this one becomes 1 fifth. So now all of a sudden, this one is now smaller than this one. You keep testing numbers. So basically, 4 and greater than 4, okay, 0 is less than 1 over n, which is less than 1 over 2 plus radical n. So now this is perfect because now I was given a bigger function and I found something smaller. Now this is a p-series and it's a p-series with an r of 1 and because it's 1 I know that this diverges. So now because 1 over n diverges that means this one has to diverge. So I know it's kind of complicated, might be hard to, stand, uh, hard to understand, but just know there's only two things that you need to know. Okay, if you have a smaller function and you create a bigger function and that bigger function converges, then the smaller one has to converge. And then if the bigger one, um, sorry, if you're given a bigger one and it diverges, then the smaller one has to diverge as well. So um, you'll have some practice today. Um, hopefully you understand the direct comparison test. Obviously you have the solutions in case you need them, um, but hopefully it, it's easy to understand. So. Thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.